Hey, it's Joe Glantz from Abiner, and this is the last uh, video in this series of Maestri and Hellbent working through objects and classes. So I um, hope you enjoy it. It's uh, it's been a long, you know, a lot of hours, <laughs> but hopefully you, you gain something good out of this. Uh, thanks. Cheers. Well, I guess I can do. And then, uh, character object. Care object X to Y, okay. Okay, and then we've got, uh, <coughs> Okay. So you said it's comparing, right? It's not comparing. It's just output. It's, this is, this right here is where you would. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I got you, I got you. Do the compare here. But this has. How, would you, how, would, how would you write that? How would you write that in? Like, like would I just say if or? Well, yeah, I mean, you've got logic in your script now. Yeah, no, 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 but I just don't know how I would, like, yeah, okay, okay. If, uh, let's see, and you don't need to include the index, you just need the X and the Ys, and then the widths and the heights are, they're with them, so... so now, in see. the original, in the original, I have to do that for every every brain individually no, what I just does everything all at once okay okay if character or no we're gonna do the brain first brain object dot x is if brain object is yes okay less than ch a r o v j dot x and Brain object dot width plus brain object dot x is greater than chair object dot x message box. Uh, let's see, uh, brain. Space there, brain index has hit character, character in the C G R A C T E R N. What? Oh, sure. The, Char index. Uh, okay, then oh, that's right, you don't have um I guess I could just include it. It's easier than there. Now you'll have that too. Uh, comma, brain, oops, brain, x, brain, object, uh, x, character, <coughs> x, a, H A R O B J and X. All right, let me make sure. Brain object, chair object, brain object. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, we got a hit already. So brain one has hit character one. One one ninety six two oh one, which makes sense. 
crazy. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, you know what it is? It's, it's passing through it or something? Or waiting till the next... Huh. I don't know what that is. Oh. Uh, oh, that's bad. That's real bad. What do you see? Well, the problem is, is it's it's got an X update and then a Y update that comes in after it. So if the X update comes in and the Y update would make it so that they missed, it would have been a false hit. Oh. Yeah. So, well, it's not that big a deal. Where do, where do you have, where do you have the, where it updates it? It's just a timer. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, I think what I'm going to end up having to do is just do like a object dot character move x y position then object brain move and x y position and just have it done in a uh, in a method rather than well, are you actually having are you actually having false hits or it's just getting hit twice when it shouldn't uh, it's actually getting hit like four times all right brain three hit character one Brain three hit character one, brain three hit character one, brain three hit character one. Because in in mine, I as soon as it touches, it would get respawned. Yeah. So that wouldn't that in itself wouldn't be the problem because as soon as it did that, it would pick a random another random spot on the screen. Yeah. Ring four, hit character one. So the brains that hit, they reset? Yes, the brains get reset. If a and brain the character if goes to character, center. If it hits another brain, if it hits a character or another brain or one of the lasers. Okay. And if it hits the wall, it moves off in another random direction. Well, no, no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I can take, no, I can take uh, this, and I can dissect it. And even if, even if it doesn't answer all my questions, I'm sure that I'll get a lot out of this. Actually, I think I would rather. Um, what makes more sense to me is when you do your movement updates. Is it movements? Does it update all the movements and then do comparisons, or does it? it it's actually using a GUI control move, so it's moving X and Y at the exact same time. Okay. So you have your new positions for both the char characters and brains before you do the movements? Yes, yes. It goes through, it goes through and <clears throat> it takes their current x and y location and adds or subtracts from it uh -huh. and then it does the gui control move uh -huh. so i move the image of it that amount of pixels and each of them so the brains the brains themselves have their own have their own timer uh -huh. and the the character has its own timer and their speeds they even if even if uh the pro like they ended up inside each other a little tiny bit, like if if it was a little tiny bit buggy like that, where they actually went a little bit inside, or if it's not a big problem. Right. Okay. So. Because as it is, as it is, for example, the image of that I use for the that I used for the character, if it's facing left or right, it's actually narrower than if it's facing up and down, uh -huh. and I don't account for that in my in my math, like. If it's turned sideways, it still has the same amount of dimensions, let's say uh, 50 by 100, even though it's actually now 20 by 100. Right. And because things are moving at a fast enough speed that the only way you would really notice is if you actually try to stand still 
and let something pass through you. Okay. So let's do this. Character one is hit by the brain three. Okay, yeah. So basically all I did was update the character object's position. Got hit by two brains at the time. So that's if it gets hit, it changes its position. Right. Okay. Yeah. So well, this is only with one character, so change it to two characters. Character yeah, one the, got the, char hit. the character is directly controlled, so right. Yeah. Character two got hit by rain three. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, they're getting pretty, pretty beat up. Well, you don't have a very big screen. No, I don't. Mine, mine. I think the game was like twelve hundred by six hundred. Uh. Uh, oh, so this would be, oh, dang it, I hate it when I do that. Oh, I didn't want that. <coughs> oh, you son of a bitch. There we go. One of the few things about Windows 10 I both like and hate. So the width was... Something like twelve, twelve hundred, and uh, the height, and eight hundred, six hundred. I only have uh, my max. My max resolution is uh, like uh, thirteen sixty six by seven something. Three hit character one and brain four hit character two. They're working together. Now is it is it constantly changing those? Uh, yeah, so it only stops. It, it'll. They're actually they could actually be doing more than one move while you're doing that, right? Yeah. You're not stepping into it, right? Well. Each character moves in this example. Each character is moving. Mm -hmm. Then it update or when that happens, it does the check on each what one I, of them. What I'm saying is that message box, even though it's popping up constantly, it's not you're not like stepping into each move. Like it's not hitting every single time it moves, right? No, no, no. Like it might move a dozen times before it pops up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This one here, it looks like the characters actually moved into the to the brain area, and I just told it to go to 500, 500. What I should have done was just tell it to move plus 500 to get it out of the way. There we go. Brain two hit character two. Brain four hit character two. Brain four hit character two again. I guess we've got a vendetta, I guess. And brain one hit character two. I see, yeah, I mean, so what you would have to do is, you know, update your character's position, 
then update the brain's position to reset it somewhere, then then it shouldn't. Usually what I did with the brain was I would temporarily move it out of screen and then give it a new random location. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Because they were part they were part of uh, two different root subroutines or timed events where the brain would move and then the other one was detecting collisions between objects. Uh -huh. So so rather than have the object getting hit over and over again while it's waiting for the new move to update, uh -huh. I just put it as soon as it gets hit, I just put it out of the screen. Yeah. And then when it comes around, it'll say that there's a position available for a new brain. So I'll say brains minus one, one, uh, minus, minus. And then if brains are less than three, which is what I had as my max, then add a new brain at a new random location and start moving. Now, this doesn't kill or destroy the brain here. No, no, no. I know that. I know. I know that. I know that. Yeah. But I could write in that logic there. Yeah. Right. As soon as they collide, I I gain a point, and the brain gets spawned somewhere else to start anew. Right. Well, it's what I would say is just uh, train obj dot x new x. And it it doesn't even honestly it doesn't even have to do that. Honestly, it doesn't have to do that. It just has to move it out of the screen, and it can be the same brain again. It just has to randomly move it out of the screen, and then ran put it in a new random spot. Right. Or has to put it in a specific spot out of screen so that way it can generate the new number to put it back on the screen. Right. Why do I have all of this? Okay, that's that's garbage. So uh, where are you? Remove there it is, remove include. Yes. Uh, what the hell are object examples? Class test. This is garbage. I don't know why that's doing that. It's starting to piss me off. Things include. Okay, so. That's that in the nutshell. It'll start running on its own. Add characters. You just change the character numbers up here. Brain numbers and such. I guess that's... Uh, oh, you're not going to move the character on a brain hit, but... No, no, only on a laser. Yeah. So I guess technically... It would be the brains die to everything, including themselves. Actually, well, you could just move this to negative ten to get it off the screen. Well, not negative ten because it's it's twenty five pixels wide. Okay, so twenty five then. Yeah. But what I also have to do is I have to come up with a each each of the brains they have to have their own position because. What I do, I can write it in the logic that um, they don't play a sound effect if they're off the screen, but that's mm -hmm. extra logic. Whereas if I just, each brain has its own location off screen, it can't collide with each other. That way it can't create the sound effect. Well, the only time it needs to make a sound effect is whenever the brain interacts with the character. So you could make the logic that even if the brains occupy the same space, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because you're, we're only brains, checking for the character the position. They don't. They don't play. You're right. With the with the brains, they don't play a sound when they destroy each other. Right. You're right. So this here, I'm just going for the most part, looping over the character, getting the information for each character. You're only going to have one, but this is if you had multiple characters, you could scale it, um, and you don't have to delete any of that. You just change this to one. Mm -hmm. And you're only going to have one character and four brains. So brain one hit character one. Brain one hits character one again. Come on, brain two, three, and four. Wow, ah, brain one. There we go. Brain three hit character one. There's the 
size or the spaces and everything else. Then if you, uh, then you can come in here and do basically this, but for, for, uh, is it S E R? Yeah. Laser index, laser object in stuff dot laser, and then do all that, and then build a laser in here, and then create the, the lasers here. It's basically doing the same bullshit over yeah, and over again. The only, the, only, the only difference is, the one of the main differences that I can see is that I only have to write the logic once for, right. for each type right. of collision. So I'd still have to, I'd have to do the lasers and brains, and I'd have to do play, players and lasers. But I don't, I don't have to write, uh, you have four brains. That would, for me, that would have been four lines of uh, if it falls within each other. Right. But you have yeah, this here takes care of the character, then this brain logic here is yeah, you got a point move the brain or then using the same character position, yeah, you've got laser is in the same area, so move the laser off screen, put the character back in the center, take away some health. And I would suggest using the laser above the brain because if a laser hits you and the brain hits you at the same time at the same place you're going to kind of want to punish the character more mm -hmm. yeah 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 so then once it moves you know you do your moves and everything else and then you know the brain ends up where it ends up but uh yeah that's Wow, oh, I got hit right away. Ooh, rain, two, rain four got him. Damn. But yeah. Oh, wait, brain four is good. The brains are good. So this dude's picking up brains left and right. Yeah, I'll pick apart this and uh, see how you build the object, how you incorporate everything in. Because this is a script that I, I've already created, so at least I have something to uh, reference that I can see how this compares to the way I wrote it. Let's see where the... Oh, I stopped the share accidentally. Didn't mean to do that, but... Go get that script. <clears throat> yeah. And honestly, I don't know that I would do it exactly this way. Like, I would just have like uh, have a a method in there that says like uh, brain movement, character movement, all that other stuff. But I guess, saying, honestly, this is probably going to be more suited to your needs. Then you can have. Well, I, uh, I wrote that script to see if I could. Right. Because I'd never seen anyone use Auto Hotkey to create a game like that. Right. But yeah, uh, every time any object gets set, it goes through that underscore underscore set um, method, and then it just checks where the character is and checks where everything else is so that but that's only what 50 58 lines in the class itself so only what 28 to 58 or 30 lines it's got to be less code well it's we're i think it's only four at like i'd have to go over The, so you have incorporated also the move phase as well. Right. Like you're not you're not actually moving, but you have some of that. No, I can't really say that that's part of that because that. Well, no, I just didn't want the character to stand still while the brains were moving around. Yeah, hold on, hold on one second. There we go. All right. Like I said, don't expect anything, but 
if I do happen to get some time to tinker with it. I got to get going, though, because... Yeah, no, me too. My, and Joe's got to do his thing. I'm surprised he's still here. I, I wasn't. He just got back. <laughs> I went and took a nap. <laughs> really? Yeah. I got well, up we're just, earlier. We're just, uh, we're just winding down here now. Cool. We're just going to say goodbye. Awesome. It was yeah, awesome talking fun. to you guys. Yeah, yeah it was, that was fun. Yeah. See you. Very informative. Bye. All right, fellas. You have a wonderful day. You too.